Hey guys, it's me, my face, and a big old pile of chaos. Sorry, no beer again for the intro. I had wine this afternoon and I have that much self-respect. If you are new here, this is my channel about cross-stitching, mental health, and cats, and somebody's scratching the bed. Hold, please. Excuse you. We're filming here. I need me some production assistance. So where was I? If you're new here, welcome. And if you're returning, the check's in the mail. Thanks. I have actually had a pretty good week. Uh, first of all, Happy New Year. Welcome to 2020. The, um, that was somebody else's line, wasn't it? Um, this is a year I did not think would ever actually exist. 2020, 20 years ago, was the future. Technically, 10 o'clock tonight is the future. I get it, but it was like flying cars and, uh, you know, contact with aliens and that kind of future, uh, not what we got here. But I hold out hope. It's an election year. I have to apologize for my hair. It was a dry shampoo kind of day. This is what we get. I've only worked on two projects in the past week which seems, I don't know. The week after Christmas and into New Year's is a confusing week. You don't know what you're doing. You don't know where you're supposed to be. Nobody's clear on when the weekend is. It's just, it's, it's chaos. I should be used to it. So I only ended up stitching on two things, but I did kind of stick with my making every other thing I stitch on, Death by Cross Stitch. So I made some impressive progress. But we'll start with the little one. This is Night Flight, my prairie schooler. Get it up here. Look at all the progress I made. It occurred to me <laughs> in stitching these little houses over here, I did the back stitch window panes in the ones on the side there not realizing that I'm still gonna have to put orange in there. So I figured I should stop, even though it made so much sense that I was stitching with one strand and I will just do the back stitch as I do the stitching. Great idea, Andrea. You're probably gonna have to do it again. If I have to do it again, I'll do it again. But I continue to love this. It's so cute. I can't wait to do the other one I have, which is who's there and maybe frame them frame them side by side or do something complimentary. I think I have enough room. I definitely have enough room for the other one on here. So at least they'll be on the same fabric. The next and only other thing I worked on this week is Death by Cross Stitch. Oh, did I work on it though? I got a whole nother Griffin done. Griffin done. That's a person. This isn't him. This is my death by cross stitch. Look at him. He is majestic. And when I got bored, I went over here and did like another row of hearts and did a little bit of the variegated purple. Here's a problem I'm running into. And I don't rightfully know that it's a problem yet. I am working on this in Pattern Keeper, which I love love. Unfortunately, first of all, Pattern Keeper, remember I said something about how it was odd that there was no backstitch on that page? Yeah, there is. Pattern Keeper just doesn't see it yet. They're not quite set up for long dog samplers, so I'll have to go back through and find the backstitch anyway. But the other thing is, like on my paper patterns and even on the PDF, I had kind of gone through and highlighted the parts that I want to remember to do in the accent color. And I have not yet found a way to do that in Pattern Keeper. 
to mark them as like these are special and I want to do something different with them. I don't know is that is that something that people I mean I think it's something that a lot of us do especially with the long dog samplers you think it's worth requesting? I give it a shot. But yeah, that's a little not daunting or anything, but um now I, I think what I have to do is when I work on this, I have to keep that highlighted picture, you're probably seeing it, that reminds me where I want to put the highlights. Uh, I'll have to keep that on my phone or something and just kind of refer to it as I go page to page. So that's it. That's all the stitching I did in a week. But that's a lot of griffin. A lot of griffin. It is a griffin, right? You guys. I have two temporarily, mostly fully finished objects. We took a little trip last night to Savers and I went crazy in the frame aisle and bought one, two, three, four, five, six, like seven frames and actually came home and did something with two of them. Two of them. This doesn't really count as a frame, but even still, I'm not leaving it this way. You remember my little redheaded witchy? I put her on a thing so that she could be out and around. Uh, I think my plan is to take this and paint it maybe black and then scuff it to make it a little older and then kind of Halloween it up. But I want to leave it cute because she's a cute Halloween. She's not, she's not goth and she's not spooky or anything like that. Um, so I don't feel like I need to leave her, I don't have to make her elegant. I just have to make her really cute. So maybe some Halloween ribbons or something like that. But that at least means I can put her out. I may also decide not to leave her on here, but to put, depending on how the frame comes out, put the, um, why can't I think? The Primitive Hair Holidays um put those on here so that I can swap them out and display them somewhere assuming I remember to swap them out who are we kidding it's gonna say Samhain all year and the other one I did and I'm hoping we're not gonna get too much glare a little bit of glare I want to say that this is called Salem and I know it is from an Etsy shop and I know that I stitched it for the, that's all right. I'll just keep slowly spitting words out. It was the Salem commemoration stitch along. <sighs> um, it is only, it, I say it's temporary because you see, it's just like stuffed in there. But it's not terrible. It's not, I mean, it's not great, but it's not terrible. I could change my mind if I needed to and take it out. But I had these little doodads. This I bought in Salem. And this I think I just got at maybe Joann's or something like that. But you know my rule. Since I can't center anything. Anything. Um, it's better to put something off center and pretend like you meant to do that. So I did that. So that's nice. And it's a thick frame so I can just sit it on one of my shelves and it's nice and it looks done and it's displaying something that I actually worked kind of hard on. And that's a plus. Look at me, just like a grown up stitcher, putting my stuff around. Laura. So let me show you the rest of the things that we found there. This is not so much a frame, but I just thought it was cool. Uh, it looks like it was from Home Goods and was $4.99. I got it for a buck ninety-nine. Um, who was it? I just watched a video. Was it Emily? Was it Diana? Was it I don't know who, but was saying if you get something that has the two hangers that you will never ever in your lifetime be able to line up with anything. Just run a string between the two of them and hang it from the middle. Yes, thank you. 
you knew I needed to hear that, I can hang this up. This one I liked just because it was a different kind of shape. I thought I thought I had something that was going to fit in there. I don't know what I thought I had. I don't. But that just means that I should stitch something new that goes in it. I think this is my favorite. It is heavy. It is metal, which is all me. Uh, I like the funky swirlies. I don't know what I want to put in there because it's kind of... It's kind of primitive, but it's also sort of, I don't know, modern primitive? I, I don't know. I was auditioning some things. I have a couple of things that will fit in here, but I don't know that I liked them in here. And it's got a symbol on the bottom. I should look up. It. Um, let me see if I can get in here to show you what it, I don't think it's going to want to focus. Okay, fine. Be like that. If I think of it, I'll throw a picture in there. Maybe if you recognize the mark, let me know. This one I got just because it's got radishes and what I think are maybe artichokes on it. But I liked kind of the weathered, it's like a ceramic garden tile kind of thing. But it's got radishes on it and that's just weird. And I like weird things. I like weird things and... That's not a song. Lastly, some of you are going to say, oh my God, you have to keep that because it's decorative. And part of you or others of you will say, okay, I see how you're going to use it as a frame. Um, it's coffin shaped. I needed it. I needed it. She's pretty cool. I mean, I'm not going to lie. She's pretty cool. But I don't like the color of the wood. It's a little, it's a little too unfinished. It needs a little, just maybe some paint it black and distress it. I don't know if I want to keep her in there or just either pop this out and mount something on it or mount something over it. I'm not entirely sure I'm talented enough to cut like matte board this shape, but I just, I loved that it was coffin shaped. And I wanted it, so I bought it for a buck ninety nine. Buck ninety nine. It is actually from Walgreens. Walgreens, and it was five ninety nine there. I got a good deal. So that was actually a pretty good haul for me. I don't usually buy things like that and use them immediately. Sometimes I buy things like that, and they end up in a box in a closet in a house that I don't live in, and then I forget it exists. These I have, they are mine. They're gonna get used. 2020 is the year of putting stuff in frames. It's the FFO year, FFO year. <sighs> Maybe I should have had the beer. I've been drinking ginger ale and the bubbles do things. So that is it for stitching and haul. There is not much else going on. I, um, we stayed in on New Year's Eve, as we usually do. Uh, we ordered Chinese food. We hurl obscenities at Ryan Seacrest because that's what he's for. And uh, watch the ball drop. And then I become instantly unconscious because I work at five in the morning. 2020 is also going to be the year of losing some damn weight. I have already started tracking my calories, although I didn't do it today. I have to do that now when I finish. Um, I'm trying to stay in the, I'm, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm using the My Fitness Pal site and app just to keep track of my calories. I don't use it to keep track of my exercise because I don't have any, so that's easy. And right now, and I think I need to redo my start weight. I don't know how much I weigh because I refused to look. So I took a guess and then said how much I hope to lose. And so it's got me at like 1600 calories a day, which seems high. Usually when I was dieting, I was at a thousand calories a day and hated it. Hated it. You know, 1600. Am I saying 16,000? 1600. 1600 calories. I mean, it is workable. 
on an average day. I mean, you still can't eat it out back like I did last night for 1600 calories, but I did pretty okay. So yes, 2020, the year we rein things in like the cats. Can I help you, ma'am? Are you, are you just going to lay down and be comfy or are you going to be a nuisance? Whatever the mood hits her. You're distracting me. Whatever. The only other thing I did this week is I watched Midsummer, which I highly recommend if you like movies that have full frontal nudity, gore, and the most epic crying scene you've ever seen ever epic crying scene ever. If you choose not to watch the movie, you can still find the crying scene on YouTube. The, the kind of uh, one of the gists of this uh, communal way of living was literally that these people kind of experienced everything together. So when this girl is hysterically crying, these other women kind of come around her and they cry with her and they start to match her her cadence and then they start to harmonize and it was it was woe it was very woe i like that but then also there was the killings and i i can't get behind that but yeah if you wish that uh wicker man had gone much much further in a much much weirder way you'll like midsummer I think that's it. Uh, like I said, it's been kind of a crazy week, so I don't have I don't have any giveaways or anything ready. Uh, maybe for next week. I have some magazines I need to flip through, and I'm going to see if there's anything good I can pull out of there to give away. Part of the problem right now is a lot of the loose patterns that I have, like from magazines, they're all Christmas, and I think we've all been Christmased out. Speaking of Christmas. I'm going to, first of all, does everybody watch the very end of the video? Because in my end cards, I always call out somebody else's videos for you to go, somebody that I enjoy that I think you might enjoy. This week, it's going to be Julicious. Um, Julia is, I love Julia. She's bright and she's real and she's a delightful stitcher. And she's very, uh, very forthright. And I like that about her. And she brought up in her latest video, which she hasn't made one in a while. So I was very pleased to see her pop up on my feed. She mentioned how, you know, every third pattern you see is Christmas. There are very few Hanukkah patterns. And the one that she pointed out that was from Ink Circles is not appropriate. It's not, it doesn't have any sort of symbolism that, that, goes with Hanukkah. It's just something that they kind of mishmash together. So she shouted out, I believe it was Arlene Cohen for her two patterns that she brought out this year. And I want to say Frosted Pumpkin that had a Hanukkah pattern. But it kind of got me thinking. A lot of the Christmas patterns that I see are like houses because, you know, one of the hallmarks of Christmas, other than commercialism, is the decorations. And we do tend to go a little crazy when it comes to decorating houses and businesses and whatnot for the holidays. So you create a pattern with a house on it and it's a house. You start putting a little snow and some wreaths and some lights and things like that, it becomes a Christmas house. So I'm trying to think, how could you make a Hanukkah house? Um, could some of these Christmas patterns be adapted? Uh, maybe shift from so many reds and greens to some blue and silver, get a menorah in the window. But I don't think there are really that many other outward trappings, like on a house, for Hanukkah. So help me think. Because I think maybe for next year, I would like to make a little, like, wouldn't it be cute to make a holiday village 
of, I'm never going to do this, but if you want to try it, um, you know, the, the, these village patterns that have a bookstore and a houses and this and that. What if you had a, a Christmas house and a Hanukkah house and a house? I, I don't know how people might decorate for Kwanzaa or, you know, definitely have like a Yule house with uh, with lots of holly and, and candles in the windows and this and that and the other thing. Wouldn't that be cute to have like a, a like an inclusive um, village for winter holidays? I think that would be cool. I think this is a good idea. I am sure that I am not talented enough to pull it off. Get the word out. Okay, guys, I think that's it for me this week. As always, thank you so much for watching. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for your likes and your dislikes and always your comments. I read every single one of them. Thank you. Have a good week and I will talk to you soon. Bye guys.